this is going to be a reality show. They have Duck Dynasty and they have Swamp People. So I just decided to have a reality show today on Sea Life. It's a cloudy day. It's a dark day and overcast, and another day with rain. We have had so much rain this last season, so many dark and gloomy days that they're telling us we're not even in a drought this year to begin the summer. What do you think of that? But the dark, gloomy days, it brings on discouragement and distress. And you turn on the television and the television has nothing but good, but bad news, no good news. And they turn bad news to make it look good. They take people who murder and they show their pictures when they were 12 and when they were 14 and they don't show reality there. They just keep lying to us through all kinds of things. And our weather station is even called the stormy weather station. What do you think of that? There's no good news anywhere you turn. Everything that could go wrong seems to be going wrong. Situation after situation comes in on us and comes in on all of us. None of us escape these kind of things. And that's where I have been this morning. That's reality, folks. And I'm sure some of you out there are just gasping because you've never seen this side. But I am so sick and tired of being sick and tired. And somewhere, somewhere this morning, a song has begun to play. It's very faint, but it plays. Look what the Lord has done. What? Look what the Lord has done. And as I think back on what the Lord has done, I think back to the things that have gone on in my life. What has he done? What is he going to do? And I think back when I was between the ages of three and four, we lived in a parsonage that was on the second story. It was built above the church. And one day I got away from my mom and dad and out the kitchen door onto the little platform or stoop at the top of the second story stairs. And I decided to grab hold the rail and swing out over that two story drop. At the bottom was a brick pavement. And as I swung out, I didn't have the strength to hold my body and I fell crumpled on that brick walk. Oh yeah, I remember that faintly because I've been told that so much. Another thing I was told was when I was about that same age, I got away from my mom and dad. I must have been quite a little gal to do all that kind of stuff at that age, but they couldn't find me anywhere. And mother looked out the living room window from that second story perch, and she could see me, my little body, unconscious almost, in a car that was closed on a hot day. And they raced downstairs and were able to revive me. Then as I got a little older, I decided to roll on the garage roof one day, and I rolled off the roof. That took my breath away. And as I grew up, I had various kind of things like that come. So I'm remembering that this morning. And I, oh yeah, I need to tell you, I was also abused as a child. Whenever I look in my mom and dad's records, anywhere in their records, they do not have a date or the time of the year any of those things happened to me. All they ever said about it was glory to God, how I was saved. That's abuse. 
whenever they can't even keep record except to teach me to glorify God. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, I remember, yes, I can remember and I can look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. The song gets stronger. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, he's done more marvelous things than I can remember. One time when we were pastoring in Sarasota, Florida, there was no food in the house. And I caught up that morning. And I said, Lord, what will I feed my family today? What can I give my children? And I looked all through my cupboards. I had some flour, had a little bit of milk. I had one egg and one apple and brown sugar. And I looked through my cookbook. I just poured through my cookbook. And all at once I found a recipe for apple pancakes with brown sugar. And I fixed those that morning. And guess what? Till today, they're a favorite of our families. We still, on special times, have apple pancakes because God gave us the recipe, as it were, and we've enjoyed it till today. Another day, no food in the house. And for dinner, I said, Lord, what do we do today? And whenever uh, I prayed that, and we had our children kneel in the floor with us to pray, we wanted our children to see what was going on because we wanted them to be able to understand how God supplied when the supply came. And there came a knock on the door and one of the members of the church just happened to go fishing that day and had more fish than they could use. Could we use it? Of course we could and we took it gratefully, thanking God. And about that time a knock came on the back door and it was one of the members down the street who made the most delicious coleslaw you about ever tasted. And so Sister Mike brought us a big bowl of coleslaw, and we were able to have fish and coleslaw and probably grits. I probably had grits in the cupboard since we were Southern people. And I look back on those days. Yeah, I can see what the Lord has done. He touched my body. He touched my body when I had cancer. He touched my body when my eye was bulging with infection. He touched my body and he healed me over and over and over again. <clears throat> Too numerous to tell. He's touched the body of my family, the various members of our family. My mother was given three days and lived 32 years. My grandmother woke up the morning after my grandfather went to be with the Lord and the cancer fell off in her, uh, in her hand that was on her face. My grandfather had told her the night before, I'm going to be with the Lord and the cancer is going to fall off your face. He's healed my husband when he was hardly given any hope with colon cancer. And the doctors told me how bad it was going to be. And I asked the doctor, or told the doctor, but I have one little word that you don't like. <clears throat> that word is miracle. And he said, you're right, but if anyone has one, you will, and we did. Praise God. I remember. Look what the Lord has done. He healed our body. My dad was on the way to the hospital and went by the doctor's office, the surgeon's office, on his way to, be, to, to have his foot amputated the next morning. And he got in that surgeon's office after he hobbled in with his crutches. And as he sat on that table, the doctor said, Brother Morris, where were you at about 2.30 this afternoon? And he said, I was just crossing the Howard Franklin Bridge on my way here. And the doctor said, I had a meeting with God and God told me he was healing you today. My dad came off that table and they had a rejoicing time and Dad came out carrying his crutches, no surgery. God had healed him in the surgeon's office. I praise God.
for the healings. I praise God that my dad, after years of having insulin because of sugar diabetes, and he would take his insulin morning and night because of that dreaded disease, and there came that day he had an insulin overdose. And as they worked with him, they realized he had too much insulin in his body. He had been healed. And we praise God and give God the glory. I can go on and on and on from the, for the miracles and the healings that God has performed in the Chesser family. And the next verse of that is, he touched my mind. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Let me tell you, there was a day in my life I was discouraged. I was despondent. I was disappointed. I had all the D's you can think of that day. And I knew, I knew I had a choice to go into La La Land that day and forget this world, or to be strong and depend on the word of the Lord. And I chose to depend on the word of the Lord because the Lord strengthened me that day and he touched my mind and my mind was changed to live and to live because the Lord had a purpose for my life. He saved me, he saved me. And it was just in time. He saved me to the point that I don't have to believe the lies that are going out over the world this day. He saved me till I don't have to accept propaganda. He saved me just in time. And he gave me the word of the Lord as my guide and as my uh, compass, the way I go through life, the way I work and go to my destiny. I'm going to praise his name. Each day, he's just the same. I'm going to praise him because look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you, look what the Lord has done. I start with disappointment and discouragement and agony and fear and everything that can come in on man. But as I think on the things that the Lord has done, Victory rises up in me. The glory of the Lord rises up in me. It's all about him. I cannot do it without him. Without him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things. I praise God. Then there came that day. We've talked about healing. We've talked about food being supplied. We've talked about minds being healed. We've talked about being saved in time, that our destiny isn't to live forever in the eternal hell, but our destiny is now to live eternally with God our Father and Jesus Christ our Savior. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ has done that for us with the price he paid on Calvary. And he said, it is finished. I want to tell you, it is finished today. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. But we've also had some awesome things happen in the financial realm. And in these days when we seem to have as many people on welfare as we have paying taxes, and it seems like our nation is at a breaking point. The Spirit of God is mighty and is able to turn our nation around. There came a day at the end of my dad's pastoring that they had just built a home and had moved to Indian Rocks Beach and, and there was no finance coming in. There was uh, still bills to be paid. There was still a house payment to make electricity, phone, water, all the things that is necessary seemingly to our lives. And dad was going out and ministering in different churches and evangelizing. And dad was a man of faith and saw many saved and saw many healings. And as he moved in that and, 
and everything. There was a lady, a wrestler's wife, that dad had befriended in Tampa and had become great friends, this wrestler, and his wife and my mom and dad. And this wrestler's wife had moved to the mountains of North Carolina. And that month that mom and dad were in need, <clears throat> she started sending a check for $500 a month. Back in those days, well, today, $500 would mean a lot to me today. But back in those days, it really meant a lot. And those $500 checks came faithfully until finances started pouring in from another source. I want you to know today, our God is faithful. The Word tells us that even when we are faithless, He is faithful. And my dad on one of those trips was in South Florida and he was playing golf with a minister. And God gave him a witty invention. A lot of his friends didn't even believe it was right to play golf back in those days. And dad's out there playing golf. And I think it was on the sixth tee or the sixth green. God heard, dad heard God speak to him, go home and build a golf course. They had, I think it was 45 acres, 49 acres, something like that, of land that had been left to my mother and her sister from my grandfather, and they had cattle on it, raising cattle, and we would slaughter a cow when we needed meat, and that's how we were living. We were living there by that time. And uh, so Dad came home and shared it with my mom and her sister, and and they agreed that they were gonna follow God. Well, within two weeks, a man knocked on their door late one night, about nine o'clock at night, asking directions. And my dad, being the gregarious man he was, invited the man in and said, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I build golf courses. And it went on from there, witty invention. God supplied the need. When it was needful, God supplied the need. In, in uh, several years ago. We had a need for $400,000 in our church. The bank had come in, was gonna take 20 acres in our building, repossessed for $400,000 and everything was paid up to date. And I went and looked at the papers and it said, yes, they could repossess it, call it within 10 days and if we didn't come up with the money, they could repossess. And so we started praying and believing God what else do you do? There's no way we could have probably, we might have been able to raise 4,000, but certainly not 400,000. And a friend of mine heard about it. And within four days, she called the day before it, the proceedings were to start for the uh, repossessing of that property. Even when the banker had told me, I'm going to sell you off the courthouse steps, and she called that day as I came in from church, and she said, what do you need? And I had not talked to this person at all. I said, I need $400,000. She said, when do you need it? I said, I need it tomorrow before noon. She said, go to bed and take a nap. It will be in your bank account in the morning. And God supplied the need. I want to tell you, God supplies our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God supplies people. God heals. God saves. When it seems to be there is no hope, we can believe God. We can take him at his word. Remember Jesus when he was tempted and the enemy came to him and the enemy said to him, first of all, with each temptation, if you are the son of God. How many times does the enemy come to us if you're really a child of God? If you're really. Why aren't these things happening? <clears throat> I want to tell you this morning, we are a child of God. We are children of the Most High. We are children of the God who has given us grace and mercy and sustained us. And he tempted him with bread. 
God, Jesus had not eaten for 40 days. He was hungry. And in the midst of his hunger, that's when the enemy said, cast these stones, turn these stones into bread. How tempting that could have been for Jesus Christ to have done that. He could have done that, you know. He had the power to have turned stones into bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to another place to see the holy city. And he said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, the devil starts trying to quote scripture now. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him again, It is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus always came back with the word. We've got to get the word in our heart and in our mouth. We've got to speak the word of God. And again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I will give you, as if it was Satan's job to give him all those things. The creator, the one who created Satan. And Satan saying to him, I will give you all these things. If you will fall down and worship me, then Jesus said to him, look, I've had enough. Away with you, Satan, for it is written. Even when Jesus had had enough and he said, enough is enough. Away with you, Satan. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The word tells us the enemy only left for a season. He keeps coming back to us. He keeps coming to try to check us out and try to find a weak point that he can come in one more time with discouragement, that he can come in one more time with disappointment, that he can come in one more time with depression. But I'm telling you today, enough is enough. I have said for years, we are not human beings having a supernatural experience once in a while. Many, many Christians are on that level. They think that if they go to church on Sunday and they praise God and they feel the presence of God and they sing and they praise and they cry and they worship and they do all that and they think they've had a spiritual experience and they have. But I want to tell you, we are supernatural beings having a, a human experience. We are above the problem. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are above every situation. More are there that are gathered around for us than we have any idea. Today, around my home, in this room, are many, 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 many more than I can count, more than I could ever know of those that are watching round about and protecting and watching over us. How I do praise the Lord today. And let me thank him for this internet ministry, another witty invention. God is giving us an invention and has given us a way to get on the air and give the word of God. It's a witty invention and I believe and we pray we as a family pray over Sea Life Ministries and Sea Life TV that there will be many more that will turn in. Many more will come to hear the word of the Lord. Many more will be able to say, He is my God. I walk by grace and I walk by faith and not of sight. I am his and he is mine. He has caused the valley to become high. He has pulled the mountain low and we walk with him and in him into our destiny. So I praise God for the invention of the camera, 
the invention of the lighting, the invention of the mic, the invention of all the things man has come up with that they thought was their idea, but they couldn't have come up with it without the wisdom of God. I thank God for my children, my son who has been trained in this, that was able to put this all together, my daughter who now sets it up and speaks herself, and my son will be speaking more and more. You're gonna hear his voice more and more, but we're able to bring to you the word of God, the word of God that he has birthed in our hearts and in our life because together, we're going to be able to sing, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me and it was just in time. We're going to praise his name. Look what the Lord has done. Turn around and look what the Lord has done in your life this morning. He hasn't just done it for me and my family. He's done it for you and yours. Check it out. God bless.